What's up guys, this is BeamPool247 and this is my process for creating a Tinkerbell project using the Xcarve and Fusion 360 to Camit and Easel to, I guess, read it and send it to the machine. So here's my finished product. Um, it took about an hour and 15 minutes to machine and I used birch plywood uh, as one of the raw materials I, that the Xcarve came with. After modeling, of course, I uh, went to the CAM workspace in Fusion and I chose 2D Adaptive Clearing as my uh, solution, uh, which is located here in the red arrow. And then after I choose that uh, and a few other things, it will spit out this toolpath uh, for me here. And I'll get to the, uh, the other things right now, the feeds and speeds and the geometry and such. So here are my feeds and speeds. And I got this off of a... Um, Excel sheet online that I found that someone posted of all the math that it did and for what size bit and what uh, what speeds and f feeds and speeds we should be choosing. So go ahead and do a little Google search on that and you'll find it. So for my case I used an eighth inch drill bit uh, running up with a Dewalt router and with it setting at one I was able to it runs around 16,000 RPMs so my cutting feed rate is 35 inches per minute. So once you uh, go to the next page, you would select your, the different silhouettes or of your letters and of Tinkerbell as your pocket selections. And then you would set your, clear, your top height to be the stock and then the bottom height to be negative 0.2 or the bottom the most part of where you are machining. Next, my, uh, the next tab, I chose multiple depths and I turned off stock to leave and then for multiple depths the rule of thumb is to do half of your tool width so point, half of point 0.125 is point zero six two five inches and for the last tab uh, I chose minimum retraction so it doesn't have to go all the way back up uh, to, to machine again it can just slide over to the side um, and leave it as a helical ram type so you have a longer tool li uh, life so it doesn't just plunge into your part and next make sure you have a post uh, from from Fusion 360 to, to Easel because that's where you'll be uh, machining it is through Easel and I'll show you the steps to getting that post processor so online in the forums uh, Matt Nichols from Autodesk posts a uh, Fusion 360 uh, post, Fusion 360 to Easel post uh, that works because I used it and it worked. Uh, so go ahead and download that uh, to your Fusion 360. Uh, next, when you go to the top here and hit post, uh, after you click on your toolpath, then you'll want to go down to post configuration and choose the Fusion 360 to Easel revised post that you downloaded into Fusion 360 and then it'll spit out the correct kind of g-code. Make sure you export it somewhere locally so you can have access to it when you want to retrieve it uh, through Easel. Uh, next open Easel up and then go to import g-code and then go to the top right hand corner of the screen and hook up your your uh, X-Carve machine to your laptop and then hit the carve button. Next using the XYZ tools uh, in the carve command after the carve command um, you would set your uh, origin of the tip of your your drill bit to the or of your end mill to the corner of the wooden block um, and also make sure to clamp down all your your wooden pieces for in my case I'm only using three instead of like four clamps as long as it's tight and not going to move around when you shake the the piece of wood uh, and there's going to be a lot of dust, so be prepared for to clean up your wood chip with a vacuum. And also, um, it's going to be loud, so don't do this like in the middle of your apartment at like two in the morning. And then here's a time lapse of my my first carve. Um, everything seemed to run pretty well. Um, every once in a while, I would. Uh, use a vacuum or a sandpaper to just scrub off some things that I didn't like on there 
but for the most part I just left it alone to run while I did other things um, so yeah so feel free to message me if you guys have any questions during my process or anything about the X-Carb or Fusion 360 or Easel for that matter I, I just started beginning using X-Carve, uh, so I'm learning alongside some of you guys, but hey, it was a fun project, and yeah, thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoyed.